Coming up on Network Africa, Somali President Mohamed Abdullahi Famaju opens a new session of Parliament. More than 100 Somali refugees fleeing conflict in Yemen arrive in Mogadishu. And South Africa's President Jacob Zuma meets the chairperson of the Commonwealth Games Federation to discuss the hosting of the 2022 Games. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Temita Kwehagwemi. Somalia's new president, Mohamed Abdullahi Famaju, has opened a new session of parliament, the first since his election last month. He told lawmakers that corruption and Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab were the two greatest enemies of Somalia and that he would fight to eliminate them. Also, Hassan Hali Kiyeri has been confirmed as prime minister and sworn in. Mr. Kiyeri will now work on putting together a cabinet. Over 100 Somali refugees have returned to their homeland after fleeing ongoing conflict in Yemen. Fighting in Yemen has divided the country for nearly two years in a civil war that pits the Iran-allied Houthi group against a Western-backed coalition led by Saudi Arabia. The Rajanis arrived at Mogadishu's Aden Abdullah International Airport on a commercial flight from Berbera, Somaliland, after a difficult journey that began by boat in the Yemeni port of Aden. Some of the returning Somalis wept openly as they recounted the harrowing experiences they endured in Yemen. Many of them had originally sought refuge from Somalia's civil war in the 1990s. We hated life in Yemen. It was bad, and we longed to return to our country to live with our people. Others explained how hardship compounded by the deteriorating security situation in Yemen forced them to flee the capital Sana'a and move to other cities before returning to Somalia. I fled the country in 1992, but in 1994 there were clashes in Yemen in which so many Somalis died. However, this recent wave of clashes was the worst. We were forced to flee to Sana'a, then to Aden, where things got really bad. The latest arrival of Somali returnees comes after another group of around 127 was repatriated from Yemen last year. According to the International Organization for Migration, which is facilitating the return of the refugees, more returnees are expected to arrive in Mogadishu in the coming day. IOM officials also say that security conditions in Aden had hampered efforts to evacuate more Somalis from the war-torn country. We've just heard from talking to the returnees that um, a much larger number are still there. The situation is getting worse and they really do want to come back. So obviously the next step from here is to look at how we can best facilitate by boat, by plane. And we're working with uh, all the stakeholders involved to ensure that happens. Somalia, which had its fair share of political challenges in the last decade, is now home to over 30,560 returnees who have fled violence in Yemen. The Somali returnees were taken to an IOM reception center where they'll receive support to help them reintegrate in Somalia. Medical charity MSF has warned that a health crisis is looming in Tanzania's refugee camps following an increase of refugees arriving in the country. The group says some 290,000 refugees, over three quarters of them from Burundi, are crammed into three overstretched camps. MSF, which offers medical services at the camp, says it has recorded a fourfold increase in the number of outpatient consultations. It says overcrowded and unsanitary living conditions are contributing to cases of malaria, diarrhea, respiratory tract infections, and skin problems. MSF head of missions, David Nash, says there is an urgent need to set up a new camp. He also says the decision by Tanzania's government to withdraw automatic refugee status to Burundians arriving in the country may affect the humanitarian assistance that can be made available to them. 97 Algerians deported from South Africa have landed in Algeria this week in a development unconnected to the recent flare-up of violence against foreign nationals in the country. 
27 of the deportees are those who have already completed jail terms for alleged crimes including aggravated armed robbery, drug trafficking and fraud. The Consular Department of the Nigerian High Commission in Pretoria confirmed that the group was truly verified before they were sent back to Nigeria. An additional 27 were exempted from deportation by a court order during processing. Now, some analysts have suggested that one of the things impeding Africa's growth is a lack of good governance. That's why the African Capacity Building Foundation, ACBF, situated in Harare, is seeking to support capacity building projects and programs submitted by government and non-state actors across Africa through investment and technical assistance. But how easy has this project been? The Executive Secretary of the ACBF, Professor Imano Onadozi, joins us live from our Abuja studios to tell us more about this. You're welcome to the program, Professor. Now, Africa needs good governance to address its Thank development you. You issues. Yes. Africa needs good governance to address its development issues. So what's the ACBF doing to entrench democracy on the continent? No, as you rightly pointed out, uh, democracy is a very important um, element of uh, development. Uh, as long as we don't see democracy as an end in, in itself, uh, but rather a means uh, through which we can achieve socioeconomic development as well as improve human welfare. Uh, in that regard, therefore, uh, democracy cannot be seen as uh, just one election, or can it, nor can it be seen as something uh, that uh, once you elect a democratically um, chosen government, therefore you have achieved uh, your objectives. It has to really uh, contribute to improving the, uh, improving the human condition. Uh, we and the African Capacity Building Foundation have, uh, since the last 26 years, uh, supporting uh, the um, public sector, the private sector, and uh, non-state actors, including civil society organizations, uh, and not just in the area of uh, democratic uh, 